Welcome to GovCast. I'm your host, Amy Kluber, and I'm at FCO West. Today I'm talking to Lieutenant General Matthew Glavy, Deputy Commandant for Information at the U.S. Marine Corps. General Glavy, great to have you on the show. It's uh, great to be here at the FCO West Conference, and I'm so glad you have a few minutes to catch up with me on some of the work you've been doing at the Marines. Thank you. It's great being here as well. Thanks for the opportunity. So yesterday we heard from General Eric Smith. He talked through the global security landscape and what the Marine Corps is doing from a top-level perspective. But to start us off, can you give us a picture of the information aspect here? What is the importance of seeing information as a warfighting component, and what is the role of IT in all of that? Great. Thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, so this is comment on the Marine Corps really was right on point yesterday, and as you've described, he, he kind of painted this picture of, of modernization, what's required to bring capabilities to bear that are going to be required for this uh, for this campaigning and competition we find ourselves in. He also talked about some of the innovative spirit that's going on with our Marine Expeditionary Forces. And uh, the opportunity that we have is, is the combination of those things happening that we're seeing uh, play out. All these capabilities that we're bringing to bear are reliant on the information warfighting function. You, you, you can't execute without it. So it's my job. My job is, is both the Deputy Commandant for Information as the head of the Intel uh, community element for the Marine Corps, as the CIO uh, for the Marine Corps, to make sure that I get that data, that information to the right place at the right time so the, the warfighter, the Marines at the edge, can use it in, in the way that they need to. But all those capabilities he went through yesterday are reliant on our ability mm-hmm. to deliver information to them or, or in another way, uh, to project it uh, against an adversary. Awesome. So let's get into the Marine Corps Warfighting Publication 8. I know we're expecting that later this year. Uh, You described it as centering around information being critical to what's already in the Marine Corps DNA. So can you tell me about that and how it will integrate information IT into the tactical arena? Thank you. So we started this journey out with MCDP 8, Marine Corps Doctrinal Publication 8, that was more of a, uh, a dialogue, a discussion with our Marines, taking a step back from all the lexicon and talking about information from a foundational standpoint, of, of avoiding buzzwords and just having that really that, that uh, cognitive discussion with our Marines about what it is and, and what it isn't. So the McWhip Marine Corps Warfighting mm-hmm. Publication 8 is the follow-on. So we've had this practical uh, discussion, cognitive discussion, talking about the foundational aspect, now it's to move it into the application, right? How are we going to do it? The MICWIP gets into that how and spending a lot of time with our, our MIGs. So this is actually being done already, right? Our, our MEF information groups are off and running. They're executing uh, the information warfighting function uh, in ways we probably never even, even thought of. And so it's a two-way street. We're, we're learning from them. We want to document all those best practices, turning into a, 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 a warfighting publication that is predictable, repeatable, updatable, so we have a baseline for, for where we're going. And that's what it is, nothing more. It doesn't cloud any initiative. It doesn't, you know, hold back new ideas. And it's, it's probably got to be updated quite often because this environment changes often. So that's our goal, to kind of bring some practical application of information as a warfighting function all the way down to our, our warfighters. Fantastic. So with all this said, cybersecurity obviously is a critical component to the conversation, and it seems everyone is talking about zero trust right now. So do you see zero trust having a big role in the Marines? Absolutely. We're finding a lot of success with uh, some of these principles. And of course, zero trust isn't necessarily a thing. It's a series of principles, right? A lot of it is how do you run your network? How do you generate and preserve information? Uh, a, a lot of these things are are, are, are a part of our, our duties, right, that we got to do in order to protect our networks and to protect that information. Uh, and so zero trust is is just, you know, doing our duty, being good Marines, uh, do, doing right by how we're going to protect our data. It's a data-focused environment. You know, in the past, we've tended to be more network-focused. Now that identity that I have and, and through, whether it's a common access card like a CAC or in other ways, 
right? We identify Glavy with, with these type of accesses and these type of requirements in order to, uh, you know, match the right uh, data up with the right uh, user. A lot of ways we can do that. Our migration into IL-5, right, from a cloud standpoint, has really afforded the opportunity to truly understand identities and, most important, uh, the patterns of identity. So Glavy, you know, goes here, does this from these geolocations, right? We kind of put all that together and understand that's Glavy. But if Glavy were to show up somewhere, you know, God knows where, and do things that we're not expecting Glavy to do, then Glavy has a problem, right? So hopefully that makes sense. But identity management is is key to that, to understanding, you know, our patterns of life, what is normalized behavior from anomalous behavior, and to, and to act quickly when we discover this anomalous behavior. And whether it's Lance Corporal Glavy or Lieutenant General Glavy, do do what we need to do to ensure, right, the, the, the sanctity, the integrity of, of, of the network, and more especially the data on the network. Right. Fantastic. So from your perspective, what role does IT play in major concepts at play at the Defense Department right now, such as JADC2? So IT is part of everything, uh, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. And whether we're, we're talking fires or intel or maneuver or logistics or, or JADC2, uh, from a command and control standpoint, right, it is it is the it is is part of, of, of it all. I think we can get too caught up in in the IT physical space and really understand IT from from a a, a process and principle space. What do I mean by that? So things like cloud and, and how we operate uh, in the cloud is is much of that is process oriented, right? Our ability to do defensive cyberspace operations in, in, in that concept, our ability to do network operations in that concept. I really don't think in terms of IT much anymore. I, I think in really in terms of the outcomes and, you know, back to this information war fighting function, how are we going to make sure the right information, the right data gets to the right place at the right time to to be fused and correlated, perhaps, in order to drive outcomes against all the other warfighting functions. So hopefully that, you know, that gets into the things like ubiquitous transport layers. So so there, there's a lot to it, and I don't just kind of package it into a small IT, but rather into a, into a big information requirement. All right. Fantastic. Last question. You've called the F-35 a flying server that could provide the nation an information advantage. So can you elaborate on that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's an amazing piece of gear. You know, I talk about fusion and correlation, but I didn't understand it until I saw an F-35 do it, really do it. Uh, we, we, you know, in my Intel hat, I, you know, I am the head of the Intel community element for the Marine Corps. We always talk about, about PED. So this idea of production, exploitation, dissemination in an F-35, for the most part, not, not entirely it's done, in, it's done in the machine, right? That's the beauty of, of the F-35, amazing fifth-generation capability. But the fifth-generation capability is not just about stealth and other things that the airplane can do. Really, it's, it's, a, it's about this ability to fuse and correlate information. You know, Marines are going to launch in those airplanes. They're going to launch with commander's intent. They're going to understand their mission and how they're going to do it. And, and they're going to go off and, and execute. And, and the capability of, of the processing power on the airplane is going to be a significant advantage of how we're going to fight. It's important to have small diameter bomb. It's important to have AIM-9X and other capabilities really important to the airplane. Do not get me wrong. Like, that's important. At the end of the day, like, this is the quarterback. Like, this is the brains of the organization on how, we, how we're going to take exquisite intel, perhaps from the sensors of the airplane, right, be able to have a C2 methodology to include the pilot and their interaction uh, with, to, to ultimately a weapons target pairing and how all that comes together in a single airplane or, or a flight of four preferably is pretty cool and pretty amazing and and something that we got to be really good at fantastic well uh, general eric smith said it himself it's not just about the gear but it's clearly a, a, an important part when it comes to the information the data all the things it manages and is uh critical for getting that into the warfighter mission. So thank you so much. This was well great. Said. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. GovCast, along with HealthCast and CyberCast, is a production of GovCIO Media and Research. For more podcasts and to check out the other shows, head to govciomedia.com. 
Watch out for new episodes released every Tuesday and Wednesday across our shows. You can follow all of them on your favorite podcast platform. And if you like what you heard, make sure to let us know by leaving a review. And if you have any topics you think we should look into, contact us at newsletter at govcio.com.